In today's video, we're talking about how the Steam Deck OLED is the ultimate PlayStation portal, why GTA 6 probably won't launch on the Steam Deck, and SteamOS 3.5.9. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Deck Ready. I hope you had a great weekend. I've been playing a ton of Fallout New Vegas on my Steam Deck. I just saw that the Fallout 76 expansion for Atlantic City just dropped, so I might give that a shot, but I'd love to hear what you're playing down in the comments below. Obviously, I'm playing New Vegas just because I was so excited about the Fallout TV show trailer. I am like largely extremely positive on it. There's a couple things that bug me, like the Cyclops living in the vault. I think that's a little weird. And also I know people go back and forth on whether or not they don't like or do like the assault rifle in Fallout 4. I think it fits in the world of Fallout 4, but I like the handmade rifle that they put in Nuka World and 76 a lot more. I wish that was the one being showcased in the trailer, but those small nitpicks aside, I think it looks really good. So yeah, I was like, I'll play New Vegas on my Steam Deck and it runs incredibly well and you get amazing battery life on the Steam Deck OLED. So if you haven't tried it out, give it a shot. So the first thing I wanna talk about today is why the Steam Deck OLED is pretty much the ultimate PlayStation portal. So the BS portal, it's been out for a little bit now. My buddy Richard over at Fan the Deck did a great review on the device. Uh, you're basically the person who wants to buy the thing or you're not. I think there's a very niche, small group of people this thing will work really well for. And that's people who don't play on anything other than a PlayStation 5 and they're not ever going to buy something like a Steam Deck. But for people like like me who have a Steam Deck and don't really have a big reason to buy a PlayStation Portal uh, other than the fact that I like my PlayStation 5. There is a really cool workaround which is of course Chiaki which is about to get its biggest update yet because you know on the PlayStation Portal if you're streaming from your PS5 to the device you're getting a 1080p 60fps stream and if your PS5 is hardwired into your uh, router or anything like that you should get a largely pretty solid stream from your console to the device which is pretty cool, right? Like being able to play your PlayStation 5 games like Spider-Man 2 or RoboCop Rogue City or anything that came out. Like even Armored Core 6 would probably be a good game to play on the PlayStation Portal. It's cool because you can keep your saves, you can keep everything working, and you'll largely get a pretty good experience with the added benefit of getting DualSense features like haptic feedback and of course adaptive triggers. Like all of that is extremely cool. And obviously you're also going to be able to just pick up where you left off with your PlayStation 5 game saves, right? Like there are games that have cross-saved between PlayStation 5 and PC. You can play on those on the Steam Deck and they work just fine, but of course you need two copies of those games. So having a handheld that'll allow you to keep your save from Spider-Man 2, God of War Ragnarok, Armored Core 6, and just play on a handheld on the couch while maybe your wife or girlfriend is using the TV. I see the legitimate use case there. And it seems like if you hardwire your PlayStation 5 into your router, you're going to get a pretty good experience with this device, which are all good things. But as someone who has a PlayStation 5, who has a Nintendo Switch, who has an Xbox Series X and a gaming PC and a Steam Deck, I'm not really the target audience, I don't think, for something like the PlayStation Portal. And the cool thing is, it looks like my Steam Deck OLED is going to be an upgrade because we're going to be able to stream in HDR very soon to Steam Decks from our PlayStation 5s. I'm gonna be real, I personally would prefer nine times out of 10 to just play games on my Steam Deck OLED, but there are examples of games that I just can't, right? Like God of War right Rock and Spider-Man 2. And knowing how good Chiaki works, having HDR actually work as well would be enough to push me over the edge and get me to stream a game like Spider-Man 2 to the Steam Deck because there are things I can do in that game to get the platinum that I don't need to have the big 80 inch OLED running for, right? Like playing through the story, that's not something I would ever be comfortable or even really want to stream to a handheld like the Portal or the Steam Deck for just because I wanna experience that on the biggest TV possible. But you know, cleaning up the side missions, cleaning up the collectibles and everything you need to get the platinum trophy. That's the stuff that's perfect for a handheld. And it's kind of like the ultimate vision when it comes to something like the portal or the Steam Deck. And the same thing really goes for a game like God of War Ragnarok, right? Like the story stuff, the big cinematic moments, that's something I'd want to experience on the TV. But there is so much side content in that game that involves just running around a map, finding collectibles, busting open treasure chests. This video is sponsored by the Mag Cube. Look, I know you have a bunch of wall chargers laying around your house, but none of them are as awesome as the Mag Cube. Not only is this thing nice and premium, but its killer feature is its two USB-C ports that are fully powered up to 140 watts. So you could plug pretty much anything into this charger and not only is it gonna charge, it's gonna charge fast. I've been using my Mag Cube with the Steam Deck OLED over the past week and now this thing comes with me everywhere I go. I know the Steam Deck's battery life is better in the OLED model, but it still leaves a little bit to be desired. So having a charger that's going to charge my device nice and quick is awesome. 
awesome. And having two ports means I can charge my phone at the same time, which is great. When you're ready to grab one for yourself, head to the link down in the description. And once again, huge shout out to MagCube for sponsoring this video. That's the kind of stuff I would enjoy streaming to the Steam Deck OLED. Now, unfortunately, I'm pretty much done with both of those games. Obviously, like God of War is over a year old at this point, and Spider-Man 2 was a very quick, easy cleanup game. I haven't gotten 100% yet, but I don't really want to go back to that just yet. But, you know, it's cool that in the future with Sony games that are probably going to have similarly easy platinum trophies to get, similarly uh, easy objectives to clean up at the end of the game, because, you know, they streamline everything and put their stuff from one game into the next one. I could see this being a really cool way to use my Steam Deck with my PlayStation 5. Now, this is available to try out now. Chiaki itself is pretty simple to set up. It takes a little bit of time, but it's nothing too complicated. You will also have to do tweaking on top of your Chiaki app to get this to actually work. But if you're someone who's been looking at the PlayStation Portal and you have a Steam Deck OLED, maybe give this a shot and see if the HDR streaming looks good enough for you because HDR on the Steam Deck OLED has been incredible for me. Like any game that supports it gets an automatic color boost and just everything looks a little bit brighter and more evenly tuned and I like it personally. I've actually noticed the difference with the OLED and the HDR versus the LCD screen and if you've been watching the channel for a while you know I'm the kind of person who really wasn't there to criticize the LCD screen on the Steam Deck OG. Next up here let's talk about GTA 6 and its future on the Steam Deck because ironically this Chiaki app is going to come in very handy for people who want to play Grand Theft Auto at launch on the Steam Deck. So I'm sure you've seen the news the trailer leaked and and Rockstar basically just released it. They said, sorry guys, the trailer leaked earlier than we wanted to, so we're just throwing it up on YouTube. I'm really excited for this game. I think the Bonnie and Clyde story is going to be really cool. I was a little let down by the Sopranos-esque story of GTA 5. It was a little too tongue in cheek for me, and this looks like a little bit more of a recalibration, and I'm excited to have two playable characters. I think overall it looks really good, but the biggest disappointment surrounding the release of Grand Theft Auto 6 in 2025, outside of the fact that we're going to have to wait probably two years to get it is the fact that Rockstar is doing their classic move again and just releasing it on consoles first and not PC at the same time. I don't know why I was expecting them to be any different because their most recent game, Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm not talking remasters, I'm talking games they actually made and released, that was the exact same situation, right? It came out on Xbox and PS4, then eventually a year or so later it came out on PC. It brought new features and there was updates that came along with it for the console versions, but we had to wait a year for it to come to PC. And if you read all of the Take-Two press releases for GTA, six, it looks like that's the exact same situation we're facing here with this game. On the one hand, I do understand why Rockstar does this, right? Like you get double dipping on the release. You can say, hey, everyone get excited for the original release of this game. And then a year later, all the people who didn't pick it up on console can get it for PC and be excited about it. You can release a patch or maybe some DLC alongside that second release, and you can probably get more sales out of the game than you would if you released it on PC and console at the same time. But, you know, I I don't think this is something they necessarily have to do, right? Like they're developing the game on PC. They're gonna have the PC version ready to go for launch. And effectively, they'll most likely just be sitting on it for a year until they wanna release it with that whole batch of brand new marketing. And from that perspective, it just bums me out. I thought we were kind of past that. And just with the way the internet works these days, it just doesn't really feel like something they need to do, but it seems like something they are going to do because from their perspective, it seems like a situation where they're saying, if we have a system that's not broken, let's not fix it. But regardless, I'm honestly curious if this game is going to run all that well on the Steam Deck when it does come to PC. I think it could just because if you look at Red Dead Redemption 2, for example, that's an incredibly graphically demanding and extremely good looking game, but you can basically run it at high settings at 30 FPS and you're barely, if ever, going to see a drop at all in that game if you play it for hours and hours and hours. Of course, there are issues you run into with the Rockstar app which really suck they stop you from playing offline in certain situations but at the end of the day graphically speaking you're able to get a really solid 30 fps out of that game and if you look at gta 6 obviously the map is going to be massive but i'm thinking it'll either be on par or just a little bit bigger than what we see in red dead redemption 2 so knowing that red dead redemption 2 runs as well as it does on the steam deck i think this could be a situation where with some heavy tweaking and lower settings we could potentially run this game 
game on the deck. But it is good to know that if you pick this game up on the PlayStation 5, you could just install Chiaki on your Steam Deck and stream it with HDR to the Steam Deck OLED, and it's going to look extremely good and run well on your device to the point where, you know, if you're using Chiaki, you can definitely tell, like you can feel some latency, but that's like any app, right? Like you can feel latency on the PlayStation Portal. You can feel it if you're using an Android or an iPhone. And once you're playing for a little while, you get used to it. Honestly, for cleaning up side quests and just messing around in the world, I might try out streaming GTA 6 from my PlayStation 5 to my Steam Deck with Chiaki. But it sucks to say that, uh, yeah, at launch, it looks like we're not going to be able to play on Steam Deck because there's going to be no native PC version at launch. Now, if they release it on Switch 2, we could emulate it on the Steam Deck, but I don't think the Nintendo Switch is going to have an easy time running this game, so I wouldn't get your hopes up for that. And then the last news story I want to talk about today is that we're already getting updates to SteamOS 3.5, and if you go into the preview channel, the number they're on now is SteamOS 3.5.9. I'm not going to go down the itemized list of new things because it's mostly performance-based, but the reason I wanted to bring it up today is because it fixes a lot of issues that I personally saw on the Steam Deck OLED since it's come out, and going into the preview mode, has fixed them mostly with stuttering. Now, there's a bunch of different reasons they list as to why games are stuttering in some cases on the Steam Deck OLED, but what it really comes down to is just things getting maxed out, whether it's the CPU, the GPU, or just the frame time that you're getting to the device. Because of all of those different factors, they were having stuttering issues, and that was something I experienced actually in Fallout New Vegas. I'm running the game at ultra 40 FPS just for context here. The stuff like that will drop the frame rate down to the low 30s, and even if you lock it to 30, you do get a little bit of stuttering when you're loading in new chunks of the map. I'm not talking about stuff like that. There was just weird texture streaming stutters and loading stutters where you'd get a one frame frame spike on the Steam Deck OLED, and that wasn't really happening before I upgraded to SteamOS 3.5. So it's good to know that with this new preview build, a lot of that stuff has been smoothed out, which is great. I also experienced it a little bit in Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Unfortunately, that game, despite being as old as it is, it's really hard to run it at a lock 60 FPS. When you're getting into towns like Grand Sword, and it happens even if you lock it to 30, but if you play it at 60, it's much more noticeable. You'll get frame drops into like the low 30s, maybe even the low 40s, and it makes your game like slow down to a crawl. I hate stuff like that. I will say the single frame stutters that I was getting as I would run across the map, those have been entirely cleaned up with this new Steam Deck preview update. But that being said, it seems like something that is going to come out officially sooner rather than later. And you know, with these preview updates, I've noticed in the past that a lot of them will introduce more issues than they actually fix. So it's, I'm just telling you, this is a PSA. If you're having some single frame stuttering issues on your Steam Deck with games that didn't stutter before you upgraded to SteamOS 3.5, or you got the Steam Deck OLED, which ships with SteamOS 3.5, know a fix is in the works. And for the most part, it seems to be fixing issues for a lot of people. Like, like I messed around with SteamOS 3.5.8 and I thought it was good, but then I immediately downgraded because I will never forget last summer, I was playing Alan Wake, the original release of it, because the remastered version on the Epic Store doesn't really work that well on the deck, and I was getting these single frame stutters. And no matter what I did, I would look at YouTube videos and no one else would have them. I was like, why is this happening? It turned out to be because I was on the preview build. When I went back to stable, everything was fine. So I've just had a bad experience with these preview builds where games were running worse, especially ones that I wanted to play at the time. So I kind of tend to stay away from them. But if you're the kind of adventurous person who doesn't mind maybe some hiccups in the games you're playing, especially older ones, give this preview build a shot and let me know what you think down in the comments below. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you today. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.